Okay, we're now looking at the thin film interference of air. So we have two solid objects, glass plates in this particular example, that are producing interference within the air here. Uh, so this is a, uh, sometimes called an air wedge. So you have, and, and I have an example that I'll show in class where I have two glass plates that I have sandwiched together and there's a little bit of a film instead of, you could have an oily film in here or you could have just simply air. And we have an interference that is being created by this wedge, whether it's filled with air or filled with some other medium. Uh, so let's take a look at that. We're going to be getting, we have two rays here. We have ray one here and ray two that are interfering with each other and producing interference. So the question in here is, we have two questions it looks like. What is the spacing of the interference fringes seen by this reflection? And is the fringe at the line of contact, which is right over here, is that going to be a bright band or a dark band? And we're going to be assuming that the light that is coming through here is a wavelength 500 in nanometers. That's the wavelength in air or a vacuum. Okay, so this is a glass plate. So this is something like uh, index refraction is a 1.5, for example, and this is 1.5. I, I didn't state that because you don't need it. And over here, this is an index refraction of air, which is a 1.0. The reason I'm stating this is because our first step we're going to do is we're going to look at the reflection that occurs at the upper surface here and then at the lower surface. So at the upper surface, uh, I can write that here, the upper surface, uh, right here at point A, um, we, we, what you'll see is that we're going from a more dense medium into a less dense medium. And when you go from more dense to less dense, you're getting no phase shift. So there is zero phase shift that occurs there. Then we are going to look at the lower surface, point B here. So this is the lower surface. And we want to discuss briefly here what kind of phase shift occurs here. Now we're going from less dense to more dense. And so we're going to have a 180 degree phase shift. So this means that our net phase inversion is going to be therefore off by a half wavelength because these will now differ from one another. So to answer our very first question, whether we are going to see something that is bright or dark that can be answered right away because now since these are if you were to move point a and b all the way right here to point c then these two reflections that are occurring at this just at the very top and the very bottom here are undergoing a phase shift so really rays one and two are out of sync with each other and so automatically if t was zero then we would be having two waves that would be out of sync with each other and hence the fringe at the point of contact would be dark. Okay, so um, I'll write that down here. So I've written here that since there's a half cycle wave shift that occurs here at C because these are out of phase with each other, uh, then the fringe at this line of contact point C is going to be dark. So you'll have destructive interference. So thus, let's move on to figuring out what the spacing is between each line that you see in here. So thus, the, uh, we are going to use destructive interference. Okay, so the extra path difference, which was equal to 2t plus the net phase inversion. We're going to replace the net phase inversion with half of a wavelength because they're off by half a wavelength. And then we're going to write for destructive interference m plus a half of a wavelength. Now if you rewrite this out you can write m lambda plus a half of a wavelength equals 2t plus a half of a wavelength and you can see that this half of those wavelength here and this half of the wavelength here cancels out and so you really end up with just m lambda equals 2t. So now to solve for the um, spacing between the interference fringes we're going to look at similar triangles. So you're going to see this triangle C 
B, and then all the way up here, there's a nice little right triangle in here. And then similarly, we can look at this triangle all the way up to here, where that little piece of paper has been put in here like that. And those are two similar triangles. So using uh, similar triangles, we're going to write T all over X is the same thing as H all over L, which is the length of the slide, which is given as 10 centimeters. If we rearrange this equation, oh, we can also substitute in, for example, T in here. We're going to replace where T is equal to M lambda all over 2. So now we have M lambda all over 2 x equals h all over l, and we're going to rewrite this equation for x. x will be equal to m lambda l all over 2h. And so if we substitute our values in here, let's leave m as it is, and the wavelength is given as 500 nanometers, because, and we do not have to divide it by any particular index or fraction because the interference is occurring within the air. That's what the extra path difference is. So this is really lambda zero. L is 0.1 meters. And we have, oh, I guess I should change that to 500 times 10 to the power of negative nine. And we're gonna divide this by two times the height of this little piece of paper that's been wedged in here, 0.02 millimeters, so that's times 10 to the power of negative 3 meters. And so when you put that in your calculator, uh, you'll get 0 0.00125 meters times mth order. Or you could write that as 1.25 millimeters times the mth order. So that means that the successive dark fringes, or you could say bright fringes as well, um, are 1.25 millimeters apart for every, for every successive integer of m. Okay, and that's it for example number five.